watching Sahara TV. I'm Chika Odua. We're continuing our coverage of March, Women's History Month. And in order to that, we have to bring you another interesting guest. We just had one guest. Her name was Esosa Edomo Swan. She's a theater performer. And now we're bringing you a Liberian journalist. She is calling us from Liberia. Her name is May Azango. May Azango is a Liberian journalist. She's been reporting since 2002, just about the time when Liberia was coming out of its civil war, which we all know was a very brutal war that lasted for 14 years. At the end of that war, May be decided to become a reporter, and she's been doing very expository investigative reporting. Recently, she wrote an article about female genital mutilation, and this article has now uh, put her in danger for her life. She's on the phone with us. Uh, May, can you hear us? Can you say hello to our audience? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you so much for coming on to Sahara TV. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. So tell us first, what exactly was this article, what was so controversial about it that made people angry? Uh, I really don't know because this uh, female genital mutilation being ongoing for a very long time and uh, in the media for a long time too. Even on the UN website, it's there, everywhere. But um, I think the reason why my people got angry because I am a Liberian living in Liberia and reporting on it. The women self offended because they said I leave up a soft secret. I shouldn't have done it as a woman. But if it was a white journalist, there would be no problem. But because I'm black, they are Congo or Liberian, live in Liberia, according to them, I'm, I'm supposed to know the source of value. Why should I now go and give it out to the white people, as they say? I put it out there, everybody's seen it. Now it's a problem. I don't know why they are so angry. But I was only talking about the medical risk. The medical race says the women in cancer, okay, because I talk to a doctor, I talk to a midwife. I didn't talk to a victim who was circumcised at the age of 15. She was so bitter and she had seen or seen for a deal. Uh, they were, maybe they were angry because the manner in which she said it, she said um, at the age of 15, uh, she was knocked down to the ground. Four women held her down and a woman cut her with a knife. So she could still remember. Not many people in Liberia will know what, how the procedure go about. But because that woman shared it and they wrote it, it became a big problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said that white journalists, it's okay for a white journalist to come in to Africa, to Liberia, and talk about the dangers of female mutilation. But it's not okay for a Liberian female journalist. What made you want to speak yeah, out? So went, what made what? what? Why did you decide to speak out against this practice, which has been practiced for so many centuries in Liberia? The reason why I chose to do it is because I always write stories on, um, on less fortunate people. I write stories on people who are not hurt, people who are suffering, the destitute. Those are people that, that I'm interested in. I go into some community and interview people because I feel that if their voices are not heard, if I don't write it, nobody will know about them. Mm -hmm. Now, why I decided to report on it, the people are taking girls as young as two years old, three years old, mm -hmm. and taking them to the family and having them circumcised. Have you been That's circumcised? Why will be affected. Yes, yeah, circumcised. How about you, May? Have you experienced circumcision yourself? What I mean? Have you been circumcised? Oh, no. Interestingly, I have not been. My mother is from um, the southeast. The people on that side don't practice it. My father is from the north, 
and the people their practice is that is very high. Okay. And I can remember when I was small, my father wanted us to go there, but my mother stood up and said no. Because my mother put her foot down, my father didn't take his birth there. Other than that, we would have, I would have been a victim. Wow. But while I'm talking about it, the human rights aspect, not only the babies who are violating their rights, two-year-old, three-year-old, no, no. Mm. How can a two- or three-year-old child run a home? Because they say they, are, they do it to get a woman ready when she's in her home to take care of her husband. Can a two-, three-, five-year-old child run a home? No. <laughs> You're asking very good questions. That's a very good question. And May, you sound very passionate. Your voice, you're speaking with so much passion. In your article, you said that there is a secret women's society in Liberia that is performing these circumcisions. Can you tell us more about this secret women's society? The secret women's society or the women's secret society in Liberia is called the Sandy Society. This is a Sandy Society, and the reason why it's secret is because they told them, whatever we do here, you have a oath of allegiance to pledge not to say a word. Those people are brainwashed that if they do stick it out one day, they will die. Mm. Okay? So that is a secrecy in that society. And in that very Sandy Society is where they take these girls and train them to be good of wives, according to them. Everything they do there is good, but the circumcision access, people been telling them over and over to take that part from them, remove it. And they said no. Okay. Because when they when they when they when they do to when they don't practice that part or they remove that part from there, mm-hmm. the women will run around, they'll be so mistress. So they keep it there to subject the woman. That's all. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to ask also, is there a spiritual nature to this female genital mutilation in the Women's Secret Society? Is there a spiritual rationale behind it? Come again with the question. I was asking about the Women's Society and the reason why they're doing the circumcision. Is there a spiritual or religious rationale behind it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They have some spiritual things going on there. There's a whole lot of things there. And according to some people, it is for the woman to be dominant in the home. Okay? So she will be over her husband. She will be everything she say is gold. There's a whole lot of spiritual and a whole lot of things there. And those things that do that, they won't allow them to force it. Okay. That's what makes it so secret. They do a lot of things other than circumcision. They will not the women down and mark their back. They will gas their back with wake up play or knife. You see some of the gassing marks on them is like the big gas gases you see on the Nigerian people on their faces. That's how they mark those women back. Can you imagine? Okay. So they do all kinds of things there. It has spiritual implications too. Yeah, well, the spiritual implications sound very scary. So, May, you published this article, I want to say, it was in, it was in a March, early March. When did you start receiving the death threats, and how did the threats come to you? How were you receiving these death threats? Oh, when I reported the article, it came, up, it came out on in the uh, International Women's Day, March 8th, mm-hmm. okay? And that day, I had to go to Toti. Toti is, is a place five or 45 minutes drive away from the capital of Monrovia, but it's in Monterado County. So I went there, and this is where I took the pictures of these little girls coming from the family. The pictures of these little girls I took was just to illustrate how small the children are when they take them to these places. Okay. That is why I took the picture. Okay. And then when I went there, I took this picture and came back. Then later on, uh, the Police Health Center reporting on crisis came to me from journalists, two journalists. And uh, I decided to do my health. I have, I have to do a health uh, article, so I took them to Tori, the same place. And while we were there talking with traditional midwives and all of that, my editor, 
confronted Africa mm -hmm. for a wedding. While they're waiting on, she calls me. She said, Me, are you still in Saudi? I said, Yes. She said, If you are there, you have to start living now. Because I have been getting numerous threats that the people are threatening to catch you and take you to the planet and have you caught. And when you are caught, they feel your, your mouth will be closed. They want to keep you shut. So leave from there before they kidnap you, okay? So right away, whatever I was doing, I stopped it, got a car, and left from Saudi, okay? But surprisingly, when I came to Monrovia, the threats were so many. Mm -hmm. Because my editor, uh, 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 number is in the papers, but my telephone number is in there. So every threat they had to give me, they sent it to her. Okay, they told her that because I put my mouth in a business, I will pay dearly for it, okay? Yeah. So they said a whole lot of things. That could be in there. That was March 8, March 9, March 10, it went on. Then March 11, for my office, I worked at two different offices, you know, women. I worked for, um, I worked for New Narrative, a women's project, and I worked for Companies Africa. And then, um, a lady who is considered a soul, she went there and asked about me. I wasn't there. And she left message that she told me to take my mouth from this people thing. Mm -hmm. But since I went ahead and still said something about it, nobody should leave anybody if anything should happen to me. Okay, that was it. The oh. third time, I came must have been in the 13 or the 14, yeah, between the 13 and 14. Some traditional souls, they call the, the, the spiritual chief of our land, they call them souls and chief, okay? Women souls went to my court offices asking for me, okay? They went asking about me, example, and they couldn't find me. The security took the messages. So it was two holidays. We had the Titan, which was Reservation Day, mm -hmm. and we had the, the 14, no, we had the 16, Reservation Day, the 16. Was JJ Robert's birthday or something like that? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, March 16. So, those two days were holidays. Those people went to my book offices looking for me, and they said they were women's souls. It didn't stop there. So, do you On have any idea so any ideas of who these guys are? Do you think that they may be government forces, or are they just, you know, they renegade were, men? They are. There are four women who, who, who are in the interior part of Liberia who run the family society, okay? They were looking for me because I have violated or have written a whole lot of bad things about it according to them as legal and secret. So, yeah. of course, whenever a person leaves out a secret in Liberia, they will catch you at all costs and take you to the family and have you shop. They will do it. They always do it. So okay. why do you think to go and look for me is not to do the same thing to me? Okay, so, so May, thank you for the timeline. May, thank you for giving us that timeline. You said that this article was published on March 8th, which is International Women's Day. So what is the president, yeah. Ellen Sirleaf Johnson, what does she have to say about all this? I know that she has been called to intervene on your behalf what is that process? What are the negotiations happening with Ellen Sirleaf Johnson intervening for you? Ellen Johnson Sirleaf hasn't said anything about it. On the subject, no, she hasn't. Not up till now, she has not spoken on it, okay? It was a Friday we came out with another story because because of this story, huh? The government decided to shut down sending activity for time is getting it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, they came out with that pronouncement on Friday, which was yesterday, Thursday or Friday. Now, if this story hadn't come up, the government wouldn't have been pressured into announcing it. Now, they said seven counties are, are, are buying by the law, but nobody knew. So this... Okay. So this argument came about, so they, they, according to the government, they have sustained it, but Ellen Johnson hasn't said anything, mm -hmm. but the general minister, the internal affairs minister, they have suspended it. They were all in the papers yesterday. They say all Senate societies shut down for time indefinite, and the, 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 the land for the, for the Senate group will be turned over to the men yeah. to do the poorer society. Period. Okay, so Ellen Sirleaf Johnson, the first African female head of state, 
She has not done anything. And I think this is interesting because your case has been all over the Internet, all over the newspapers, blogs, here and there. Various civil rights and human rights organizations are speaking out on your behalf. Yet, as you're saying, the president of your country has not said anything at all. Correct? Well, I played According to according to the general minister, she said she's acting or she acting at the will and place of the president. So it's something she and the president discuss. So probably she was acting on behalf of Ellen. Ellen believes that she has ministers to attack this issue. So why should she come on and talk? I believe that is a for same point. And number two, number two, she's surrounded by a lot of these women who have all been affected. Have women in our society today are affected, and she won't want to be. She won't want to to make her friends feel bad because it, it, it makes them feel as though they are outcasts. Okay. So she won't want to make them feel bad because a lot of women are affected, and they are surrounding Ellen Johnson's family. So she's in a tight position to say anything. Okay. So May, you're in hiding, and I understand you're afraid for your life. But do you think that by hiding? You're actually kind of doing what they want you to do. You're not speaking out. You're hiding your voice. So, do you think you are falling victim to what they are trying to make you victim of in the first place? No. So, well, my, I will see. I will soon come out of hiding, as I said. Uh, one of the one of the people who threatened me was a tenant in my own house. Okay. And I gave her notice. She's supposed to leave tomorrow mm -hmm. at the end of the month, okay? She's supposed to turn my key over to me tomorrow. So if she leaves my house, I will be scared to go home. But with her in the house, I couldn't sit there because she knows who to go and call okay. to come and catch me, obviously. Okay. So when she leaves, I will go home. But why I was in home was because of this one tenant in my house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as for the other people who are around, I don't know them, but this lady, I'm sure of her, she's around by these people, okay. and she could, and these people, they hold one word. They, they always speak for their friends, they always speak what they with one another, okay. and they will never go against the oath. So if one person betrays them, they all will gather up and, 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 and fight you. And I'm surrounded by a lot of these women. Both out of them. And this woman in my house, a tenant, she knows these women. So who knows when she will go and call them to come for me at night? That so, May, May, can I ask, are you house. married? Um, no, I'm not married. I was almost about to get married, but then the wedding was called. Okay, I was just wondering, you because know, if you were married, what would your husband have no, to no, say? No, I'm not. I'm okay. I'm okay. A single, I'm a single mother. I see. Okay. Just my and last question. My last daughter, question, May, for you. What? Why is it difficult for African female journalists to work on the continent? I know that on Facebook, I contacted you, and you replied to me that working on the continent of Africa as a female journalist is very difficult. What do you think needs to change? What do you think needs to happen to make it easier for female journalists to do their work in Africa? Oh, like the way, like the way they, they, they like, like the way they, the government has come up and say, uh, or, or send the activities to be shut down for time indefinitely for that, on that. Now the attention has been drawn for me a little bit. Mm -hmm. But both the those and chiefs are still angry with me because they feel I get that story to pressure the government to take this step to took. Okay? Mm -hmm. But I do feel so good that that step was taken because I feel my effort was now wasted in me. Even if I was still hiding and nothing came out of the story, they would have been even more worrisome. But I was in hiding for effort. And the government came up and sustained it. Wow. I okay. would say hat off. I like it. I'm proud because at least I have made an impact. You right, know, yeah, you're exactly right. Okay. May, you're, you're yeah, certainly that. making an impact. You are speaking up on behalf of, you know, the thousands of girls in the northern part of Liberia.
who has to fall victim to female mutilation. So I want to thank you so much uh, for coming on to Sahara TV, especially in your present situation, a very sensitive environment. But I just want to give my, my hats off to you as another female journalist. Uh, kudos to what you're doing, and I hope everything turns out well for you. I hope you're safe uh, for you and your daughter as well. Oh, don't worry. I've been taking charge of my life since the day. Don't worry. I'm safe. I'm safe. <laughs> you know, it's yes. a fight for humanity and self preservation. That's what I've been doing. Okay. My life. Thank you so much and have a great day. Okay. Thank you, too, Chica. Anytime. Okay. Have a pleasant day too now. All right. Uh, bye, May. So, viewers, that was May Azango. Very interesting conversation there. May Azango, as I mentioned earlier, she's been a reporter for 10 years. She writes very uh, controversial, investigative, ex expository pieces. And her latest story, which was published on March 8th, which was International Women's Day, that article was very explosive in her home country of Liberia. She was talking about female genital mutilation. And now she's, as you said, she's hiding. She's afraid for her life. But she plans on coming out of that hiding soon to be able to speak as she is supposed to speak and report the truth, so she's able to come out very soon. And we hope that you got some insights into that conversation and learned a few things. Uh, up next, we want to take some more of your Skype calls. We have some interesting questions. Whatever is happening in Africa, we want to talk about it. We want you to talk about it. So stay tuned on Sahara TV. Thank you so much.